All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you could take your seats, we're going to get started with the on-time arrival, as they say in the, in the airline world. Do you gentlemen want to come up? Uh, I'm John Hughes. I'm an editor for Bloomberg First Word. That's our breaking news desk here in Washington. And I'm president of the National Press Club. Press freedom has been a big priority for the club this year. It is every year. And we've got a great turnout of club leaders. I'd just like some of our board members, the chair of our Press Freedom Committee, to just stand up and be recognized here in the front row. I call it murderer's row here. <laughs> but uh, thank you for, for your leadership and making press freedom such a priority. Now, we're here to discuss Washington Post reporter Jason Rezaian. He was imprisoned in Iran one year ago today. This is the longest captivity for a Western journalist in Iran. Now, I want to get something off my chest. The National Press Club again calls for Jason's release today. Iran's revolutionary court should conclude its process today. Release Jason to his family. As a Post reporter, Jason is part of the Washington journalism community. He is like family to us. We've really gotten to know Ali this year with his numerous trips here to the club as we've been working together on, on Jason's situation. Ali is like family to us here at the club. We're tired of Iran's delay in this matter. It's past time, way past time, for Jason to be free. I would now like to hand the podium over to Washington Post executive editor Marty Barron, and he will say a few words, and he'll introduce the other guests up here at the table. And when, when they all have had their say, I'll be back for the question and answer session to call on all of you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, and thank you all for coming. Uh, as you know, a year ago today, the Washington Post correspondent in Iran, Jason Rezaian, was arrested, pulled from his home, and placed in Iran's worst prison. His wife, Yagani Salehi, also a journalist, was arrested along with him, and two others were arrested as well. The others have been released. His wife is out on bail. But Jason remains in, today in Evan Prison, and over the past several months, he has been su subjected to a sham trial on trumped-up charges of espionage and other supposed offenses. In a year's time, no evidence has been produced of espionage or any other offense. It is clear, as it has been all along, that Jason did nothing wrong. All he did was work diligently and fairly as a journalist. Every aspect of this case, his incarceration, his trial, the conditions of his imprisonment, has been a disgraceful violation of human rights, and it violates common decency. An innocent individual, a fine journalist, a devoted family man, and a dear colleague is being unjustly deprived of his freedom. This is what has happened over the past year. Jason was arrested without charges. He was imprisoned. He was placed in isolation for many months, relentlessly interrogated, and denied medical care he needed. His case was assigned to a judge who had been sanctioned internationally for human rights violations. He could not retain a lawyer of his choice. He was given only an hour and a half to meet with a lawyer approved by the court before the trial began. Jason's lawyer only learned of the date of the trial and the week before it was to start. And then the so-called trial was closed. Closed to the post, which asked to send an editor as an observer, closed to his mother and his wife, and closed to the entire world. There have now been three hearings during the trial, which apparently is coming to a close. There has been no evidence of espionage or any other wrongdoing by Jason. On the other hand, the Iranian judicial system has been the poster child for bad behavior. This case has violated any reasonable standard for due process, for evidence, and for fair legal representation. The nuclear negotiations that recently, recently concluded have, sadly, provided no resolution to Jason's case. Iran's system of injustice continues uninterrupted. 
Justice requires releasing Jason to his family and to the rest of his life. Freedom is his right. And we call again on Iran, its government, and its judiciary to let this decent and innocent man go. I am now going to ask Ali Rezaian, Jason's brother, to speak. Ali has left the rest of his life behind to campaign full time for Jason's release. No one has worked harder for Jason's freedom than Ali. And then I will turn the floor over to uh, Jay Kennedy, General Counsel of the Washington Post, to discuss important new legal steps we are now taking to press for Jason's release. Ali. Thank you, Marty. I'd like to thank you all today for attending this press conference to bring awareness to the one-year anniversary of my brother Jason's unrest, unjust detention in Iran. I'd first like to thank the National Press Club for making this event possible and for its tireless efforts on Jason's behalf. National Press Club President John Hughes and the Executive Director William McCarran have been tremendous resources to myself and a source of strength for me this past year. I'd also like to thank the many organizations that have worked to free Jason this past year, most especially Reporters Without Borders, Change.org, the White House Correspondents Association, and the Committee to Protect Journalists. Most importantly, I'd like to thank the Washington Post and its leadership who have worked tirelessly in the past year to gain Jason's freedom. It's now been 365 days since Jason and his wife Yegane were taken from their home in the middle of the night without any warning. Their computers, phones, cameras, and papers were confiscated. Since that night, Jason has been held in Evan Prison in Tehran. During this time, he's been subjected to months of interrogation, isolation, and threats. He's been deprived of basic medical attention, exacerbating minor medical issues, and risking permanent physical harm. Fortunately, Yegane was released on bail after 72 days but had been pro prohibited from leaving the country and, or returning to work as a journalist. For five months after her release, she was prohibited from speaking to an attorney. Since the first day of his detention, the Iranian government has consistently denied Jason his rights under the Iranian constitution, Islamic law, and Iran's longstanding international obligations. They've held him on a temporary detention order for a year, ignored their laws guaranteeing him legal counsel and bail, and are now ignoring their law, which mandates bail for any individual held without conviction, conviction for over 360 days. For nearly five months, Jason was held in solitary confinement, and even now he is isolated from most human contact. He is frequently threatened with indefinite detention unless he conf confesses to crimes which he did not commit. For nearly nine months, Jason was prohibited from hiring an attorney to mount his defense. But even then, the Iranian government prohibited Jason from hiring several attorneys and through intimidation kept others from taking the case. Since engaging an attorney, Jason has had only two meetings with her to prepare his defense. When his trial began, 10 months after his detention, it was closed to outsiders so that not even his wife or our mother could attend its sessions to support Jason. As there is no allegation that Jason has had access to secret information, this can only be a sign of the weakness of the evidence against him, the baseless nature of the charges, and the Islamic Republic's desire to cover up this year-long injustice. This anniversary is all the more trying because of the agreement announced between the P5 plus one and Iran last week. For this past year, my family has watched these on again, off again negotiations drag on. We have awaited each deadline, hoping that they could provide an opportunity for the Iranians to end their legal and inhumane detention of my brother. <coughs> we have tracked Iran's laws on detention of prisoners and watched as Iran ignored their own laws and demonstrated that they are not a nation of laws as they so disingenuously claim to be. 
We have hoped that the United States and other, US, and other governments could impress upon Iran the illegal, that illegally holding an innocent journalist within their court system would jeopardize the odds of success of a deal and would have consequences for their country. To date, that has not been the case. Instead, what we've seen is repeated extensions to these deadlines, arbitrary de extensions of Jason's detention, and a secret trial which started 10 months after Jason was imprisoned has consisted of only three days of hearings separated by weeks of unnecessary and arbitrary delays. Iran has made a mockery of its own legal system and proven that it has no interest in upholding its laws, let alone fulfilling its international commitments. But despite Iran's best efforts, their illegal detention of Jason has not gone unnoticed. Nearly half a million people from over 140 countries have signed the petition at change.org slash freejason, calling, calling for Jason's immediate and unconditional release. Respected journalists and news organizations from around the world have called on Iran to release Jason. And in just the days since the announcement of the nuclear agreement, the, the major U.S. news organizations, editorial boards, the President and Secretary Kerry as well as several presidential candidates, including Secretary Clinton and Senator Rubio, have called on Iran to release Jason and the other detained Americans. Please make no mistake, this is not a partisan issue. I am proud to remind you that both the House and the Senate unanimously approved resolutions calling for our executive branch to prioritize the release of Jason and the other Americans being held and missing in Iran. But in the days since those resolutions passed, little has changed for Jason. We now have a nuclear agreement with Iran which removes the country from economic sanctions. This agreement was approved by the UN Security Council with little opportunity for review less than a week after it was announced. Yet Jason remains in prison after 365 days, held on clearly manufactured charges by parts of the Iranian government that are uninfluenced by Iran's president and hold the rule of law in contempt. Jason has no clarity on the, on the future of his trial and little hope that the Iranian government feels any additional pressure to do the right thing, the just thing, and release him and clear his name. In closing, I'd like to thank the many individuals around the world who have worked so hard on Jason's behalf this past year. Friends and colleagues who know Jason and know the absurdity of these charges, journalists and human rights advocates who have only read Jason's fair reporting in Iran and its culture, and are equally shocked by Iran's treatment of this fair-minded journalist who gave it a voice to the outside world. Good people from, around the, from all corners of the world who see this case as the gross injustice that it is and who have called on their governments to support our efforts, prayed for Jason's release in their mosques, churches, and homes, and lent their voice online for, to the call for Jason's release. I'd like to thank each of you for your support. But as I've said before, until Jason is home, none of us have done enough. Not our government, not and politicians, not the media, and not myself. Please take a moment to sign. Please take a moment to sign the petition at change.org slash freejason calling for Jason's release. Visit our website at freejason.net and join us in calling for his release on Twitter at hashtag freejason. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Now I'd like to introduce Jay Kennedy, General Counsel of the Washington Post, to talk about steps that we are taking today to press for Jason's release. Thank you, Marty, and thank you, Ali, and thanks everyone for being here. You know, as Marty and Ali have made clear, our goal at the Post since Jason was first detained last summer has been to do everything we can to secure his immediate release. Um, and we're not going to stop pushing for that result until he's finally free and reunited with his family. Unfortunately, his detention has continued even though Jason is completely innocent of any crime and has done nothing to warrant this prolonged detention and separation um, from Ali and the rest of his family. You know, both Marty and Ali have described the horrible circumstances of Jason's arrest, detention, and trial um, and the impact that this has had on both Jason um, and the family. Um, what this has shown to us is that throughout this process, Iran's conduct towards Jason has repeatedly violated his fundamental human rights. So as we continue our efforts to press for his release, we're now doing so in a new forum. 
um, the Post has filed a petition with the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention seeking Jason's immediate release. This petition, which we are making available today, makes clear um, that Jason's detention is arbitrary and unlawful under both Iranian and international law and requests that the working group issue an urgent appeal to Iran declaring that his imprisonment is unlawful, that he must be released and allowed to return home. Um, we believe Iran has violated international law by depriving Jason of his internationally recognized human rights. It's put forth no evidence whatsoever corroborating the charges of espionage and collaborating with foreign governments. Rather, Jason was arrested and continues to be detained simply because he exercised his right to free expression and did the work of a journalist who seeks to truthfully report and document important and newsworthy events to the world. In addition, since the date of his arrest, and as Marty and Ali have described, Jason has plainly been deprived of his right to due process. He was not informed at the time of his arrest of the charges against him, was not released pending trial, was not brought to trial within a reasonable time, was unable to prepare a defense, and was unable to choose and freely communicate with his counsel, all in clear violation of both Iran's, of Iran's obligations under international law. So given the complete lack of evidence that Jason has committed any crime, we expect the working group to conclude, as we have, that the government of Iran arrested and detained Jason for his work as a journalist and to find that detention completely unlawful. And we do hope that this petition and such a finding by the UN will speed Jason's release, which has taken far too long. Um, so I now want to introduce David Bowker of Wilmer Hale, who, along with his colleagues at the firm, have worked tirelessly with us to make this petition happen and to help us in our efforts to bring Jason home. They have been extraordinary partners to us and Ali in this effort, and David will provide more specific detail on the post-filing. Thank you, Jay, and thank you all for being here. I'd like to start by recognizing Jason Rezaian, uh, who sits uh, isolated in Evan Prison in Tehran, Iran, as we sit here talking about his case. Uh, obviously, the goal of our work and the goal of uh, the work by the Post and by the family and by Ali in particular has been to gain his immediate release, and it's been that for uh, a year now and it will continue to be that until he is released. Uh, like, like President Obama has said, we will not rest until Jason is free and home. Um, I want to, before I get into the legal strategy, I want to take a moment to recognize uh, what I think is a totally extraordinary, uh, or the ex totally extraordinary efforts by the Post and by Ali and his family on Jason's behalf uh, in, a, in a show of extraordinary brotherly love, Ali has spent um, an enormous portion of his life over the past year working toward his brother's release, and it's just uh, totally exemplary to see it. Uh, so has their mother, Mary, um, who has made multiple trips to Iran to try to see Jason. Um, and also Jay and Marty and the entire team at The Post who have done everything they could possibly think to do in support of Jason and to pursue his release. Uh, the Post really is a model for how I would want my employer uh, to respond uh, if I were wrongfully imprisoned for doing my job. And we commend them for that. I turn now to the legal strategy, and I just want to make three main points uh, and then open the floor to questions. Uh, the first point is that Jason's detention unquestionably violates of core international human rights law that is binding on Iran. Uh, all of the relevant international human rights laws uh, apply, that apply to freedom of expression and to the work of journalists are binding on Iran. Iran is party to the Universal Declaration um, of Human Rights. Iran is party to and bound by the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Iran, like all states, is bound by customary international law, which reflects these international instruments and the core rights and freedoms they enshrine. And Iran is obligated, under both its domestic law and under international law, to comply with these international laws. And Iran has even publicly conceded as much, stating publicly in multiple contexts, including before the UN, that it is indeed 
bound by these international instruments and these international laws. Among the rights and freedoms enshrined in these international laws are the freedom of opinion and expression, including uh, the freedom of the press, the freedom of association, the freedom of participation in public affairs, uh, and a whole range of rights to due process, including the right to be informed of criminal charges, the right to counsel, the right to prepare and present a defense, the right to a presumption of innocence, the right to trial without undue delay, the right to independent and impartial tribunal, and the right to a public trial. There's no dispute that Iran accepts these obligations, that it is bound by these obligations, and it has recognized as much publicly. We think there's also no dispute that Iran has systematically violated each of these fundamental rights and freedoms in its treatment of Jason Rezaian. They arrested him without proper process or charges. They placed him in solitary confinement, interrogated him harshly for days and weeks on end, subjected him to severe physical and psychological strain, denied him the most basic medical care for prolonged periods, detained him for months without formal charges, without access to counsel, without human contact, and without due process of law. They denied him the opportunity to prepare for trial, to present his defense, and they've denied him a public trial in an independent, impartial tribunal. Against this backdrop, and in light of all of these blatant violations of fundamental human rights law, we, on behalf of the Post and the family, have submitted our petition seeking Jason's immediate release, submitted our petition to the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, which reports directly to the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva. We submit that the working group should grant our petition for urgent action under special UN procedures in light of Jason's declining health and in light of the obvious humanitarian concerns in this case. And we submit that the working group should conclude, as we have, that his detention is both arbitrary and unlawful and that he should be immediately released. Uh, a, a few words about the working group. Uh, they were established by the UN Human Rights Commission uh, to investigate and adjudicate individual cases of precisely this kind. It's, it's the only no, uh, non-treaty-based international mechanism that can entertain individual complaints against states' parties such as Iran. It's composed of five independent experts in human rights law who were appointed by the Human Rights Council and who are empowered to help protect and advance the particular rights and freedoms that have been violated in this case. It has the authority to issue formal opinions and to make recommendations and uh, to ask that the individual in question, in question be released, compensated, and that other remedies be applied. It has an urgent action procedure, as I mentioned, which is obviously applicable and called for in this case, where Jason Rezaian has languished in isolation uh, under harsh conditions, where his health has deteriorated, he's lost 50 pounds, he's under severe physical and psychological strain, and there are obvious humanitarian reasons for the working group to treat this petition urgently and to make its recommendations as quickly as possible. Uh, th the third point I want to make is that we ask Iran, respectfully ask Iran to respond promptly to our petition and to agree to adhere to the recommendations and the opinion of the working group and to grant Jason's release. We hope that Iran won't wait for an opinion of the working group and that they will immediately grant his release. There have been humanitarian reasons and legal reasons to grant his release for a year now, and we hope Iran will act on its obligations and release him. And with that, um, that concludes my prepared remarks. And I'd like to open it now, open the floor now to questions. I'll turn it over to Mr. Hughes. Thank you. Thank you. I believe we have microphones in the room, and we're, we're going to get to these questions now. A moderator's uh, privilege to ask the first question, however, and that is, why are you pulling this lever now with the UN petition? 
Why now and not, say, six months ago? And uh, how many of these petitions are accepted, acted on uh, by this group? So what, what are your chances of success, do you estimate? I think for the first part, I mean, we never expected the detention would, would last this long. When Jason was first detained last July, I don't think any of us believed that we'd be here a year later. Um, I think initially we hoped that the fact that we knew he had done nothing wrong and that he had done nothing wrong would lead to his release. Um, and then we hoped the continuing discussions between the United States government and Iranian officials alongside the nuclear talks would produce positive results. Um, and so far they haven't, and so that's why we believe that now the time is right to bring forward this sort of very public case against Iran and to make clear that Iran uh, knows that the Post and, you know, Jason and his family, you know, believe that the, his detention is unlawful and illegal and is not in any way based on, you know, it plainly violates international law. So that's why we're doing it now, and I think David can answer um, the second part of the question. On the second part of the question, the working group handles hundreds of cases every year. They are um, experts, they're experienced, and are uh, the perfect tribunal to handle a case such as this one. Uh, Iran does participate in this process. Iran has stated publicly uh, that it recognizes the role and legitimacy of the working group. Iran has faced uh, more than 25 petitions in the last roughly 10 years and has participated, meaning responded in writing, to petitions in roughly a third of those cases. We uh, hope and expect Iran to respond in this very important case. We hope and expect that they'll do so promptly and that they'll adhere to the recommendation and opinion of the working group. Okay, I saw a hand go up over here. And if you could identify yourself, your name, and your organization. Elise Labatt with CNN, thank you for doing this and, and hope this um, helps bring Jason home soon. Um, a couple of questions. First of all, um, some of these, you know, these UN petitions, you know, I, I think clearly this would be a case for that, but I think we've also seen that Iran, particularly when it comes to cases of who they consider dual nationals, feels that they have an, a different standard. And I'm, I'm just wondering whether there are really any in international legal instruments that will, you know, that will get the Iranians to change their course? Is it more of a course of, of public outcry? I mean, what, what do you, what, is there more that can be done in terms of, of rallying international public opinion as opposed to um, legal opinion? Because I, I think in cases like this I've seen in other countries, Bahrain for instance, these working groups come out very strongly and then the country, you know, kind of simply ignores it when it, when it comes to cases of who they feel their own citizens. And um, Ali, I was, I was wondering if you can reflect, I don't want to tie it too much to um, Jason's case to the nuclear deal, but you know, he did, and, and also for Marty, he, he reported so eloquently on the Iranian people. I'm wondering if he was out of prison, if he was in Iran reporting, um, how do you think he would be reporting um, on the current state of affairs with this nuclear deal? Thank you. Okay, so there's, I think, two or three in there. Who wants to take? Uh, maybe, uh, David, you want to talk about the legal aspect first? Sure. Uh, on the first part of the question, I think it's very important to note that this is not uh, the only lever that the Post and the family um, are using at, at the moment. The Post and the family are doing absolutely everything possible through every conceivable channel to try to bring about his release, and so we agree with you entirely that it's not um, wise or prudent to focus on any one particular strategy, but rather to, to pursue a, a multi-pronged approach to the case, and that we are doing, and the Post and the family are doing. Uh, nonetheless, with respect to the legal aspect of this, uh, we take Iran at its word that it is a, a country of law, that it respects the rule of law, and that it has taken this process seriously. And if they are serious about what they have said about the working group and about the importance of its work and the importance of international human rights, and if Iran is serious about its international law obligations, then this is the perfect opportunity to demonstrate that by its uh, compliance with the procedures of the working group and by its immediate release of Jason. 
Uh, okay, I'll start with uh, that. I think the answer to your question is pretty simple. I think Jason will be reporting fairly uh, on the current uh, negotiations and the deal. Uh, and I think he would bring a different uh, perspective to it than most people do. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, meet with a lot of the journalists uh, who are covering the, 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 the negotiations and the deal. Uh, but given his extensive experience in Iran, the people that he knows across uh, all socioeconomic uh, borders there, uh, I think he would bring a much more uh, diverse uh, and um, uh, fuller uh, set of information and reporting uh, to what's going on and how it's affecting people in Iran uh, in, in various ways. Okay, there in the back. Bruce Lashan from WUSA 9 here in town. Uh, Ali, were you disappointed uh, that Jason's case was not one of the negotiating points in the nuclear talks? And are you satisfied uh, by the explanation that has been offered uh, by Secretary Kerry uh, as to why he wasn't? Well, it's always been our, attend our um, belief that tying Jason to the talks uh, could be problematic. Uh, we've always wanted Jason's case to stand uh, as it, on its own uh, because he's innocent. There's no proof that he's done anything wrong. Um, was I disappointed that he wasn't released at that time? Of course. I wake up every day disappointed that Jason is still in, in prison and that we're still working on this. Uh, but I think that at this point, given that the, the uh, bulk of the negotiations are done, this will give us another opportunity uh, for Iran to do the right thing, for the U.S. government to continue talking with them uh, and uh, letting them know that uh, Jason and the others need to come home uh, immediately. Okay, go ahead, sir. Durrell with USA Today. Uh, you mentioned uh, Iran's international obligations, and obviously that brings to mind the, the nuclear talks. And I'm you know, wondering, these, the Iran is a, Iran's government is, um, has factions in it, and you know, what we've heard is that the people who control the nuclear facilities are also some of the, the same uh, factions that also probably control the prisons and, and, and Jason's uh, detention. And, uh, would like you to, to hear a little bit about how you're seeing um, Jason's detention in the greater context of the nuclear talks, of, and 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 you know what what can be expected in terms of uh, of uh, compliance, and uh, and also uh, with regards to timing, uh, we have different um, uh, timing points in this in this in the unfolding of the of the diplomacy over this the nuclear deal, and I'm wondering if you're thinking that. Um, that Jason's uh, detention will be tied to maybe some, maybe the, you know, they have the implementation day and the acceptance day and all these different days sort of um, described in the, in the deal. And I'm wondering whether you're, uh, whether you're thinking that his, uh, his detention will be tied to any of those dates. Uh, well, I'll try this. Um, I mean, I, we, we can't possibly speculate on uh, when he might be released. We feel that he should have been released a long time ago. Uh, whether a release might be tied to any particular upcoming date uh, connected with uh, the nuclear deal, uh, we have no idea. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is something that uh, should have happened a long time ago. It should happen today. It should happen for its own reasons. and. Uh, and and it it shouldn't even it shouldn't it sh it, sh it should be done because he's innocent, and so we we can't speculate on what what might happen when. Anybody else on that? Before? The the one additional point I would make is that to the extent um, any factions within Iran are using Jason's case uh, as a political lever or uh, as any kind of leverage, it would be entirely improper as a matter of law. Jason is an individual with uh, legal rights and, and freedoms under international law to which Iran is obligated. And obviously, any use of him or his uh, detention or prosecution as a political lever or any other kind of lever would be improper under international law and would be grounds for a finding by the working group that his detention is arbitrary and unlawful uh, and therefore that his immediate release uh, is required. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Siddons with the New York Times. Um, during the talks, did the U.S. government tell you that they thought they might be a vehicle for 
potentially bringing Jason home. Um, and did they ask you to hold off on um, filling this, filing this petition until the talks had concluded? Um, and secondly, has the Post had any direct contact with anybody in the Iranian government? Uh, and if so, uh, who? Thank you. Uh, well, the administration uh, never said that this would be part of a deal. They said that it was operating on a separate track, that they were having discussions with the Iranians alongside the nuclear talks, but not tied to the nuclear talks. So uh, we were ma never made any commitments uh, in, in that regard. Nonetheless, of course, we hoped that uh, perhaps those two talks might conclude at the same time and that uh, Jason would be released uh, when a nuclear deal was, uh, was reached. Uh, but of course, that has, that has not happened. Uh, let's see, what was your next question? I'm sorry. Did they ask you to uh, hold off on filing? The they did not. We, you know, we, we were taking this action independently. Uh, we've informed them that we're taking this action. Uh, but uh, we took this action on our own accord, and they uh, had no part in, in the discussions about whether we should do this or not do this. And you had one more. Sorry. Yeah, had you been in any direct contact with uh, any member of the Iranian government? Well, we've made, our, we've made our views known. We actually, uh, uh, I was, I was uh, at the meeting with, uh, with uh, Rouhani and Zarif when they went to the UN uh, last, uh, whenever it was, a year, almost a year ago. And uh, I was there and I confronted them with my own questions and other reporters confronted them with questions about Jason's uh, detention uh, and his condition. Uh, so that was that was a, a um, uh, an encounter. Uh, we also had uh, discussions uh, with them by uh, going up to New York and presenting them with a letter uh, calling for his release to the you know their representative in in New York at the UN. And uh, we have had uh, uh, other reporters who've had encounters with uh, their officials, in particular the foreign minister Zarif, uh, who have uh, pressed him on uh, why, Jason is being, uh, why Jason is being held. And there have been any number of encounters of that sort. Okay, go ahead. It's David Story from Reuters. Uh, but you haven't, either you or Ali, had any direct uh, messaging or contacts with Iranian officials, are you saying, um, say in the last two weeks? You know, we uh, over the course of the year we've made um, a lot of outreach to the Iranian government in uh, as a family uh, in a variety of different media, uh, including personal messages. Uh, I have been uh, trying to meet with the, the new Iranian perm rep at the UN. Uh, to date, they have not been able to schedule uh, a meeting for me. Um, uh, on the other side of the world, my mother is in Iran uh, and has. Uh, been able to meet with Jason's uh, judge, uh, as well as his interrogators. But other than that, she's had no interaction with the uh, Iranian government. All right, anybody else? OK, Lisa. Hi, Lisa Stark with Al Jazeera America. Do you all have any idea if Jason is aware of all the efforts being made on his behalf, what he knows about these efforts to try to get him released? You know, I think uh, what I've asked my mom and uh, my sister-in-law uh, when they see him uh, is to let him know that, you know, there are literally hundreds of people around the world working on this, that uh, the Post and the family and numerous organizations are working to make sure that uh, everything is done to get him out. Uh, how well that message gets through to him is, is difficult. Uh, his communications with, uh, his, my wi with his wife and my mother are monitored, uh, and um, you know, he doesn't have access to the normal news, so he doesn't get to see that. Uh, I think I'd also add that uh, what we see in the news and what we talk about are, is not the sum total of what's going on. There's uh, a lot of other activity that's going on and that uh, he doesn't know about. That I don't know about either. <laughs> For those of you interested in the spelling of, of names, this gentleman is David Bowker, and that's B-O-W-K-E-R, David, and he's a partner at Wilmer Hale, who also represents the Post, and the gentleman at the end is Jay Kennedy, a traditional spelling of Kennedy, K-E-N-N-E-D-Y. He's Vice President, General Counsel, and Labor at the Washington Post. 
Marty Barron, you probably know how to spell his name. There's probably uh, reporters who have maybe sent out job applications at some time in their life. Uh, B-A-R-O-N, Marty, executive editor, Washington Post, and Ali Rezaian, A-L-I, is the first name, R-E-Z-A-I-A-N. And again, he's Jason's brother. Before we take uh, another question, we, we are going to be winding down in a few minutes. Uh, just want to remind the audience that one week from tonight, we will honor Jason with one of our highest recognitions, the John Abishan Press Freedom Award. This is a great award dinner that's held in our ballroom. Uh, Ali, I believe, will be here for it, uh, representatives from the Post. Uh, and this is one of the great journalism award events. We've all been to a lot of award dinners. This one's very special. It, it's really a uh, great tribute to fantastic journalism and a focus on journalism without a lot of uh, other glitz. So you'll enjoy it uh, one week from tonight. I also want to tell you that the Post has a short video about Jason's case that we'll be playing over in our Zenger room. And that's a kind of across the way on this floor and down the hall. And uh, that's going to be uh, shown a few minutes after this event breaks up. And we have a sheet out in front that shows you how to get that video if you'd like to acquire it and use it on the air or on your website. And that information is on the desk right outside this room. So uh, we can take a couple more questions if, if we have them out, out here. OK, go ahead, sir. Jeroz Lies with Deutsche Welle, DW. Let's get back to uh, the nuclear deal and the negotiations. Um, did you have a feeling that uh, the Obama administration was hindered by the negotiations on the nuclear deal, hindered to do more for Jason? And do you think, are, are you expecting that they have more leverage now? And uh, are you expecting more action of the Obama administration to advocate this case? I'm very happy that uh, the Obama administration and other parts of the U.S. government have been speaking actively in the last week or 10 days about Jason uh, and his release. Um, I've always said that I think the nuclear negotiations complicated the situation uh, for folks on both sides, both in Iran and in the United States. Now that those negotiations are over, I think uh, so are those excuses. And uh, our sincere hope is that the folks in Iran will, will take a look at the evidence. Uh, conclude that there's no reason that, that Jason should be detained for another day uh, and have him released um, over here. Clearly, there's uh, uh, more emphasis on this uh, situation, on Jason's situation now. Uh, we're happy about that, and uh, we continue to uh, try and make sure that everybody in our government knows that this needs to be re uh, resolved as quickly as possible, and that the Iranians realize that there is a cost to them uh, for holding Jason illegally for the past year. Over here, CNN. Thanks. I'm not. I'm not sure if we've really dealt much into this since the foreign minister made his remarks a few weeks ago. I'm um, calling Jason a friend, and saying that he thought that he fell prey to some benign influences. I'm not sure quite what he was getting at, but he, what he seemed to be indicating over the last you know, year, is that um, this is really kind of part of an internal debate between the IRGC, who is really responsible for a lot of these detentions, and the more moderate parts of Iran who, um, you know, are try to uh, purport themselves as reasonable and moderate. Um, so how do you deal with this in terms of trying to get him released? Because I think people like Rouhani and, and Foreign Minister Zarif do want to adhere to international law and be seen as a, abiding, um, an abiding nation. But people like the IRGC are not rational and not to be reasoned with. Thank you. Um, I think the simple answer is, uh, you know, there are different factions in Iran. Uh, if they uh, choose to follow their rules and follow their obligations, they, they can do that. Uh, or at least they claim to be able to do that. And this is a wonderful opportunity uh, for them to uh, prove to the world that they can uh, abide by their obligations. And uh, whether or not there's internal factions that are causing these issues, uh, as uh, David has pointed out, that's 
illegal by any standards, by any international standards. Jason shouldn't be used uh, as part of any inter internal uh, political fighting uh, or as uh, uh, some kind of chip between the governments. Uh, this should be over because Jason is clearly innocent. There's no evidence against him, and these charges are ridiculous. Uh, as for the, the suggestion that um, Jason may have fallen prey to um, forces uh, unbeknownst to him, I think there's just no evidence of that at all. Um, and I think it's very telling that in all of the public statements by the government of Iran, uh, there has been no serious discussion of real evidence. There's been no witness against Jason, no document to show uh, the commission of a crime. And in fact, Jason is innocent. And I think that is critically important uh, to keep squarely in mind here. Um, it, it is, uh, we, we don't know exactly what's happening in the trial because it's closed to the public. But there's nothing in the public reporting to indicate any kind of serious examination of evidence or witnesses or any of the other things that would suggest adherence to some form of due process in accordance with international law. If you'd like a uh, copy of the petition, uh, Samantha, standing there by the door, will have copies for you. And did you want to say something else? Did, did you finish up? Uh, I think that the only thing I was going to say uh, to finish up and to, to uh, piggyback on what David said is, you know, uh, the one person who has reviewed uh, the case file and the evidence uh, that is claimed to be against Jason is his lawyer, and she has publicly stated there's no basis in the evidence to support the charges that have been made against Jason, not by Iranian standards, not by Iranian law. He should be acquitted of these, of these uh, charges. I want to thank Bill McCarran, the National Press Club Executive Director, for his work in putting this event together. And I want to thank you all for coming. I think the fact that this room is so full says two things. It says there, the, it speaks to the level of interest in Jason's case, but it also speaks to the level of support for Jason from the Washington journalism community. Thank you all for being here. to the Post, which asked to send an editor as an observer, close to his mother and his wife, and close to the entire world. There have now been three hearings during the trial, which apparently is coming to a close. There has been no evidence of espionage or any other wrongdoing by Jason. On the other hand, the Iranian judicial system has been the poster child for bad behavior. This case has violated any reasonable standard for due process, for evidence, and for fair legal representation. The nuclear negotiations that recently, recently concluded have, sadly, provided no resolution to Jason's case. Iran's system of injustice continues uninterrupted. Justice requires releasing Jason to his family and to the rest of his life. Freedom is his right. And we call again on Iran, its government, and its judiciary to get something off my chest. The National Press Club again calls for Jason's release today. Iran's revolutionary court should conclude its process today. Release Jason to his family. As a Post reporter, Jason is part of the Washington journalism community. He is like family to us. We've really gotten to know Ali this year with his numerous trips here to the club as we've been working together on, on Jason's situation. Ali is like family to us here at the club. We're tired of Iran's delay in this matter. It's past time, way past time, for Jason to be free. I would now like to hand the podium over to Washington Post Executive Editor Marty Barron and he will say a few words and he'll introduce the other guests up here at the table and when when they all have had their say I'll be back for the question and answer session to call on all of you thank you 
Thank you, uh, and thank you all for coming. Uh, as you know, a year ago today, the Washington Post correspondent in Iran, Jason Rezaian, was arrested, pulled from his home, and placed in Iran's worst prison. His wife, Yagani Salehi, also a journalist, was arrested along with him, and two others were arrested as well. The others have been released. His wife is out on bail. But Jason remains in, today in Evan Prison, and over the past several months, he has been su subjected to a sham trial on trumped-up charges of espionage and other supposed offenses. In a year's time, no evidence has been produced of espionage or any other offense. It is clear, as it has been all along, that Jason did nothing wrong. All he did was work diligently and fairly as a journalist. Every aspect of this case. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you could take your seats, we're going to get started with an on-time arrival, as they say in the, in the airline world. Do you gentlemen want to come up? Uh, I'm John Hughes. I'm an editor for Bloomberg First Word. That's our breaking news desk here in Washington. And I'm president of the National Press Club. Press freedom has been a big priority for the club this year. It is every year. And we've got a great turnout of club leaders. I'd just like some of our board members, the chair of our Press Freedom Committee, to just stand up and be recognized here in the front row. I call it murderer's row here. But uh, thank you for, for your leadership and making press freedom such a priority. Now, we're here to discuss Washington Post reporter Jason Rezaian. He was imprisoned in Iran one year ago today. This is the longest captivity for a Western journalist in Iran. Now, I want to... His incarceration, his trial, the conditions of his imprisonment has been a disgraceful violation of human rights, and it violates common decency. An innocent individual, a fine journalist, a devoted family man, and a dear colleague is being unjustly deprived of his freedom. This is what has happened over the past year. Jason was arrested without charges. He was imprisoned. He was placed in isolation for many months, relentlessly interrogated, and denied medical care he needed. His case was assigned to a judge who had been sanctioned internationally for human rights violations. He could not retain a lawyer of his choice. He was given only an hour and a half to meet with a lawyer approved by the court before the trial began. Jason's lawyer only learned of the date of the trial and the week before it was to start. And then the so-called trial was closed. closed